Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway. Today I've got yet another bargain train set to unbox for you. So far then, I've already done a couple of Mahano train sets and they've been a mixed bag. The first one was the cargo train, very inexpensive, quite cheaply made, but overall really, really good. It got a thumbs up from me. The second one was the TGV Wego set or whatever it was. Yeah, again, that was very inexpensive, but there were a few more issues with it. So with this one, I'm not really sure what to expect. Maybe it will be decent, maybe it won't. The set is this. It is a steam set. A lot of people ask me to do a steam set. As you can see, it says Western Train which again is quite an interesting phrase the naming of these sets has always been quite entertaining it looks if you look at it a little bit more similar to the cargo train than it does the we go so maybe that is a good sign but i've not had this out yet it's still sealed in the box so it will be very interesting to learn what this is like i bought it from amazon for 61 pounds 57 i think it was it was a strange value there are still some in stock at the time of filming so if you're interested in picking one up i will include a link down in the description although bear in mind in the past when I've reviewed Mahano train sets they've sold out really really quickly so if you actually desperately want one do act fast before they're all gone the prices do fluctuate a bit so at the time of release I don't know what it will be but hopefully it will be as good as I got it for so anyway the western set what is this going to be like I don't know but these Mahano sets are always super interesting to me so hopefully this will be a fun one let's give it a try so what have we got here then? I'm dying to know. I mean, the packaging, I guess, does scream budget, doesn't it? You've got loads of these stock images on there, lots of them low resolution. You've got this horribly stretched photo of the loco there, which doesn't really help to sell the thing, does it? It's an 040, as you can tell, and it also appears to have working lights on the front. Whether that's just an embellishment for the box or not, we will have to see. But working lights would be good for the price. Like I say, £61 ain't that bad. You've also got four wagons, as you can see. One, two, three, four, yeah. I mean, I challenge you to find a Hornby train set for £61 that has four wagons, as well as all the other accessories that I suspect this set has. I mean, looking at the image up top here, there is a lot of... If you get all of these stuff shown on that image, this is going to be an amazing, amazing train set. Okay, let me show you the back of the box then. Oh, sure enough, yep, yeah, there is an itinerary on the back. You can see the sheer number of items you get in this train set. So very briefly then, we've got the track mat. We've got one, two, three, four wagons, as I say, the locomotive, a sign. Uh, what's that? I'm trying to read this upside down. Sheriff, it looks like, but it's been flipped for some reason. We have a saloon. Yeah, again, the writing's backwards. Looks like a barn, a bank. A horse and carriage, stagecoach type thing, that looks pretty cool. Uh, loads more buildings, a train station, a blacksmith it looks like, a hotel, a church, more horse and carriages. You've got tiny little mine carts to run on the printed track that's on the track mat. Looks like we've got another massive elephant pat as well, so I'll look forward to that. You've got some teepees and a water tower, little wigwam type tents, regular western cowboy tents. You've got nine cactuses fences and all the track with track joiners and the amazing Mahano transformer and controller. Now don't get me wrong a lot of this stuff is just made of cardboard and it won't have been very expensive to produce but they make up for that in just the sheer quantity of stuff in here and the play value and the amount of stuff to do in this set is just unprecedented. Absolutely amazing. In fact I think I'm going to leave it this way up because we've got some tape at the front so we've got everybody's tetanus friend Rusty here. Let's see if we can get this open and reveal actually what we've got. I'm interested to see the elephant turd. Uh, I thought I'd got rid of the last one when I binned it. Seems as soon as I did that, I've got another one straight away. Okay, fine. Well, maybe I'll actually try this one. Uh, I might cut it out and <laughs> cut out the tunnels and get the train to run through it. I think that might be cool. Right, are you ready then? I've not had this open, obviously, so let's find out exactly what we get inside. Is the box accurate in all you get? Wow. Okay, so yeah, it is, it's literally the same packaging as the cargo train, except this time it, well, I was going to say it's intact, it looks intact, it's still sort of damaged. <laughs> rubbish packaging Mahano, absolutely rubbish, but intact. This did come in a proper box as opposed to just this with a sticker put on it. Uh, what have we got here? Okay, first things first then, Ooh, we'll start with the fun part. You've got the track clips and some spare fish plates, so that's all to do with holding the track together. Shall we do the other boring one? Uh, we've got some instructions here. You know what? I reckon these are going to be exactly the same. Yeah, they look it. 
exactly the same as what we've already looked at before with the cargo train. And to be honest, these sets are fairly self-explanatory, so unless you're an absolute beginner, um, I mean, obviously I'm not saying don't read instructions, I think that's bad advice, isn't it? But yeah, unless you're an absolute beginner, I don't think you're gonna be learning very much from that. Right, first things first then, let us grab the locomotive. Wow. Well, what can I say about that? Well, plastic is what I will say about that. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like a very good quality model, to be honest. There's a lot, it's very dirty, I'll put it that way. I'll show you this up close later on, but yeah, it's filthy. There's like a dust all over it. The livery application, what little there is, doesn't look to be done very well. Maybe if I take my paintbrush to it, it'll look a bit better, but yeah, it doesn't look like quality, unfortunately. For 61 pounds, I'm certainly not complaining. And I certainly wasn't expecting a super detailed loco, and by no means have we got one of those. But uh, yeah, you never know if the performance is amazing, I could enjoy this loco, we shall see. All right, what else have we got then? I think I'm gonna have to unpack this bit by bit as I go. So we've got the European style uh, transformer there, or power pack, whatever you wanna call it. So you will need an adapter if you're in the UK and you want to use those, but they're very, very inexpensive. We have here, oh, I think, oh, this is the first of the wagons. All right, we're doing this in any old order this time then, I guess. Okay, so I quite like that. That's a nice wagon. You've got NEM couplings. What? So you've got NEM, yeah, you've actually got NEM couplings, look. So you could swap those out and use them with British rolling stock. That is awesome. The wheel sets are just made of plastic, as you can see, but I suppose you could swap those out for metal ones. The wagons themselves aren't too bad, actually. And the moulding's not very good on the inside. Look at that. Hmm. Yeah, a bit messily moulded, but they're okay. They're okay for what they cost. I'm certainly not going to complain at all about that. Okay, there's another wagon, which is just literally underneath the other one. So, yeah, and sure enough, <laughs> the coupling's been broken off. These couplings are not them. Look at that. You've got a different type of coupling there, uh, which is a shame. Wow. Yeah, this one. <laughs> this one looks basic, doesn't it? There's holes. Maybe those holes are for something else to be fitted. It sort of looks like a caboose. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. The wheels are sort of jammed in underneath. I oh, know that's all right. Hmm. Yeah, that is very, very, very toy-like to the point where I think any serious modelers would be out by now. Maybe it could be improved with a little bit of work. I mean, it's not just going to be as simple as weathering the thing, is it, to be honest? But yeah, with a bit of a repair, I might have a working wagon there in the end. Let's keep getting some of this stuff out then. So, I mean, the track is fairly straightforward. I don't believe we have any straights in this set, which is a bit of a shame. I do like having straight track in train sets. It just changes things up a bit. And the track is steel too, unfortunately, which means it is inclined to rust. And to be honest, I wouldn't recommend adding this to your existing model railway. I'd just bin it and get some better stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it will be fit for purpose, I'm sure. And then you've got the power slash re-railing track here as well. I believe these help you put the wagons on if you're having trouble with that. Uh, and I suppose that is difficult, isn't it? It is difficult putting wagons on, on curved tracks. So maybe that is a good inclusion. All right, nestled underneath the track, we have another one of those open wagons. Looks the same, maybe the color's slightly different. Same wheels, NEM couplings again. I mean, these are the best rolling stock I've had in this set so far. And you get two different type colored ones. So you've got the lighter brown and the darker brown. Yeah, those are actually workable. I would actually be quite happy with more of those. Uh, if you wanted, you could weather them up, put better wheels in, put British couplings on. Yeah, anything like that. Those are not bad. Those are all right. Okay. The controller, we already know what the controllers are like. Super good. Love these controllers. Uh, in fact, I won't, probably won't go into much detail, but I'm more than happy to have, I think this is the third one I have of these now. And if you saw this video, put it up there, you'll know how super safe these are as well. Fantastic short circuit protection. No chance of burning out your locos with this thing. It's very good. Underpowered though, you probably couldn't do much double heading with it or anything like that. Okay, what is this? We've got a bit of plastic next. Um, not entirely sure what that is. Looks a bit like a sleeper. Goodness knows what it is, goodness knows. Next up then, we have the politically correct wagon. Oh, look at this. Now that is all right. I don't know why it says PC on the side. That could be a real brand for all I know. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's not offensive. So it is also politically correct, which is good. Yeah, I mean, it's basic, but it's it looks like it's got more detail than it has because of the extravagant molding on the ends there. Uh, they're bogeyed, so you've got an extra set of wheels on this one. So you've got four sets, which is pretty good. 
yeah, it's quite a nice hopper, isn't it? That uh, no name couplings on this, but yeah, overall that looks pretty good to me. Uh, the couplings are a bit wonky. Yeah, the, this does not scream quality. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Whether it all works when we put it on the track is another thing entirely, but it looks all right, doesn't it? Looks all right. Not bad for the money. Okay, next up then, we have the great big stinking elephant turd, which I do kind of enjoy, I must say. It is a fun thing to decorate up if you want to, you know, if not, uh, just chuck it away, I guess. But if you want to detail it up, it might make for a good bit of practice. I don't know. Personally, um, I'm just not a big fan of it. <laughs> and it's got that naff factor, hasn't it, with the other packaging just sort of tackily stuck on the side but no it's a nice inclusion it's a nice inclusion as always though it does take up two-thirds of the packaging which is pretty uneconomical isn't it anyway wow here are some of those buildings then so they're all sort of etched into these large sheets of card which is pretty awesome look at this so you've got there's the teepees it looks like a shed yeah loads of stuff in here the circular wigwam type tents Ah, and you've got another sheet here. We've got the horse and carts. I don't know how they go together. Yeah, they are kind of 3D, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, if you're a serious modeler, you'll have probably turned this video off by now. But if you've got a kid and you want to entertain them for a lot of hours, or if you want to just throw all this rubbishy stuff away and do something nice with the loco, make it a project or something, for 61 quid, this is starting to look really quite good. So you've got more stuff there. Um, goodness, that looks like a, a watermelon or something, a rotten one. Wow, the buildings look pretty cool though. I might, ha I will try putting some of them together. Um, I'm not to say anything of how well I'll be able to put them together, but I'll do my best. Gold City, it says, look at that. So you've got a lot of buildings. I didn't count how many buildings, but there's got to be five or six at least, hasn't there? Nicely printed as well, little horses printed on the side. I don't know how many buildings in real life would actually have horses stuck to the walls, but no, no complaints. And what's this? Oh, it's the sign for the hotel. Okay, that's come out and something. I don't know what that is. I haven't seen the fences or anything yet, or unless I missed them. Okay, next up we have the track mats. Oh, yeah, there's one of them. Oh, they're nicely printed, aren't they? Uh, low resolution. Yeah, they obviously didn't consider the size of these things when they designed them because that texture is poor, isn't it? But yeah, I'm not complaining. I don't think any kid would see that and say, oh, that's low resolution. <laughs> that's me being a snob, isn't it? Oh, look at this. There's a stream with a bridge over it. And then you've got that little minecart track, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's nice. All right, and that is it. That is everything. So were there fences inside? I didn't see any fences. Ah, yes, yes. They're sort of, they're just slotted in wherever they can fit them. <laughs> so that's fair enough. Man, so I have got my work cut out for me now, haven't I? I think what we'll do is I will show you a close look at this pretty horrible, but also quite charming in a sort of twisted, horrible sort of way, locomotive. We'll take a close look at it. Um, you're not going to be very impressed with the level of detail, but you know, we might find something nice to see. And then I guess we'll take a close look at one of the wagons, maybe the PC hopper or something like that. What does it say on it? Anything funny? No, it just looks pretty uh, straight, doesn't it? Which is a shame, which is a shame. All right, well, quantity. That is a massive tick. There is a lot of stuff in this train set, enough to keep you entertained for a very, very long time. Quality, well, I guess that's what we have to try and turn our heads towards now. What's that gonna be like? How is this stuff gonna work? Well, let's find out. Well, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I've just realized at this point I've actually got to say something meaningful about <laughs> this loco. I don't really know what it is that I'm going to say. First of all, my hands are filthy having handled the thing, so maybe that's a good thing. I mean, steam locos are dirty in real life, right? So maybe that is a, a nice touch of realism. No, I don't think so. No, you don't want to get filthy playing with model trains. And this model, believe me, is filthy. Look, look how dirty it is. It's not just dirt as well. It's like stray paint in front of the cab. You've got all that sort of purplish, brownish paint from the top of the cab. <laughs> mm, it's not a very nice loco, is it? I mean, it's a toy, I guess, but you want your toys to look nice and you don't want them to be filthy. So I'm not sure it succeeds as a toy either. The moulding is pretty horrible. Look at the bell, badly moulded, badly painted. Uh, the chimney has got like a chunk missing out of it. I suppose there's quite a lot of river to detail on the side, but it's kind of spoiled by the flashing and weird like hair that the loco's got, which is odd. You've got these massive lamps, which to scale would be about the size of a small person. 
which is pretty insane. I guess the front area looks quite nice. There's some molding going on. You've got a, a dummy coupler there, which is fine. The fact that there's any painting at all on the Loco, I suppose, needs to be very underwhelmingly applauded. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's not done particularly well. There's white spots on the top of the cab. The running number on the side doesn't look very good. But then again, I guess they've chosen like a, a Western type font. Although I don't know if every font back in the Old West would have looked like that because every font associated with this train set seems to be the same one. But that's not a big complaint. Uh, inside the cab, you've got the motor. Uh, so there's no cab detail or anything. I don't think anyone was expecting otherwise though. And around the back, you've got this weird, really, really frightening face it looks like a, a robot with a single like snackle tooth <laughs> as a coupling that is quite frightening actually i mean it's not even that entertaining in its badness is it besides the i guess the front kind of has a face as well which is weird i'm getting quite scared now looking at this loco so red wheels not nicely molded very dirty probably won't run very well but we'll see right that's done let's move on to one of the wagons Right, there it is. Uh, it's hideous, isn't it? I think that's, if I was going to sum the model up in one word, I guess I would say hideous, although again, model is not exactly right. Uh, why is it hideous? Well, I mean, the, the moulding's okay, I guess, but it's very shiny, doesn't look very good. Uh, I think it's a, for something to do with post, because there's a little letter on the side. It's not filthy, I guess that's a big positive with this. But yeah, there's no decoration on it whatsoever. It looks very, very plain. I don't know what these holes were for. I assume on a more detailed version of this model, you might have some sort of bars or a fence to cover the doors. No, on the cheapo version like this, anybody inside would just open that door, walk straight out and fall flat on the face on the ground. So that's not exactly brilliant. No NEM couplings on this one. And one of the couplings fell off in the packaging. Or in fact, in order for that coupling to fall off, I think this base piece would have had to have been removed, which suggests that it just wasn't put on properly at the factory, and they just thought, ah, well, I won't bother fixing it. We'll just throw the coupling in there, and whoever gets it, in this case me, can just fit it back on. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, <laughs> what do you expect for the money? It's a horrible little wagon. Let's show you the nicest of the wagons then. Okay, so it's this one, and again, nice is a very sort of tenuous term for this. Uh, I say nice because it's relatively complex in its moulding, and it does have some decoration. Although, as you can see, Mr Bean was in the factory on that day because after the print was done, somebody touched it and smudged it, and it actually went all over the side of the body. Look at that. There's paint all over it. It's brilliant. Ah, so quality control is nil, as we know. I'm actually dreading getting all of this going because uh, there's going to be an issue, isn't there? I mean, look at the coupling. That looks very wonky. I thought that when I was looking at the thing. I mean, I love these train sets, man. I absolutely love them. They're very, very entertaining. Sometimes it is just boring when you get a train set and everything's perfect. I suppose that's a very, very unreasonably positive way of looking at this. <laughs> um, yeah, don't buy this train set if you're looking for something that is good quality, and that's going to last you a long time. If you want a laugh, or if you just want it for parts, I mean, it's cheap enough, fine, but look at the state of this. Ah, uh, goodness me. Okay, well, well, what else to say? Well, I'm going <laughs> to, I just keep saying well. I'm going to get some of the buildings together. It's going to take a long time, so I'm going to do a separate video of that. Uh, that'll be coming out on Monday, whenever, sometime. But here's just a clip of me putting one of the buildings together. Yep, I don't think that's too much. If you want to see the rest, stay tuned, subscribe if you want to, and you'll see those put together on Monday. Right, let's do it. I thought we would start with the church, the thought behind that being... After I've built it, I can go inside and say a prayer, and then we might actually see the thing work. Um, I'm going to be using Pritt stick, but let's be honest, my patience levels aren't what they ought to be. So I've also got some sellotape so that I can just bodge some of these together. Because there are an awful, almost ridiculous lot of buildings to put together. One good thing is that they have labelled everything, so let's get started. Let's get all the church bits I need. Oh yeah, and the other fun aspect of this is that there are absolutely nil instructions. There are like three pictures on the back of the box showing somebody gluing something together. <laughs> I don't know what, but like I say, there's a there's at least, I don't know what you reckon, 20 different kits in this set. Yeah, I think that's everything then. <laughs> okay, so there's no floor in the church. All right, that's not a phrase I ever expected to utter. Let's see. All right. I mean, that's, that kind of makes sense. So, 
I'm gonna if I glue that like that, that will go together, won't it? And then these tabs are presumably for a roof. Believe it or not, already getting quite tired of this. Um, and I probably will throw these away after I've done. I know that's bad, I know, I know it's wasteful, but I've got such limited space up here in the loft, I just I don't know what I'd do with it. Right, let's have another look at the picture then. So I've now forgotten what all these parts are. <laughs> it did say, but I've forgotten. Well, this is going to be the roof, isn't it? And I'm guessing this part comes out. There we are. Quite tough, that. And I'm guessing that's where the tower will go. Maybe this is the tower. Yeah, probably. Right. So that probably goes on there, does it? Yeah, that looks right. Right. <laughs> this is literally purely for the sake of the review. Um, and I'm going to deliberately not take too many close-ups <laughs> of these buildings in the review. In fact, I can see this making people quite cross, actually, being so careless. Tape it is on the outside. Come on, have you seen the rest of the train set? I mean, the job I'm doing here is actually perfectly in keeping with the rest of the set, so I'm not, uh, I'm not doing anything to ruin this set. In fact, being held together with tape will probably make this stay together much longer than being held together with glue. You see, I'm just I'm just thinking about the quality of it, that's all. Yeah, I just want it to be good quality. Right. So the tower doesn't really fit in the hole. Oh yeah. Alright, well that's impressive because it really did not look like it was going to fit. And it's also comically tall. <laughs> Does that look a bit tall to you? Maybe it needs to be a bit shorter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Right. Now, I'm pretty sure this is for the top of the spire. It's got to be, hasn't it? <laughs> okay. And there's its hat, the church hat. <laughs> the jaunty angle. I don't know if I like that. Right, I'm going to secure the tower in place. I'm going to put it on the other way because it's got, like, uh, a bit of texture. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so yes, I've done a slightly shoddy job, and yes, I've only done about half the buildings, but it was enough for me to sort of see what they were going for, and actually, yeah, it's not too bad at all. The buildings, I mean, the hotel looks a bit naff, doesn't it? But that's just because of the way I've done it. I guess if you spent a little bit more time on them, you could actually make them look quite good. This station doesn't really work because there's no straight track, so the platform doesn't line up properly, which is a shame. Yeah, you've got the horse and carts, the little sign, tents. I have put the poop in situ, which looks pretty cool, with the most cockeyed church I think I've ever seen, which is excellent. Yeah, I mean, the scenery is okay. And like I say, I've only done about a third of it, so if you imagine what this would look like with all of it done, it would look amazing, but I did get sick and tired. So the loco itself is about as good mechanically as it was detailed. Uh, I assume it's just a three pole motor. Underneath the hood, you can see we don't have any bearings or anything like that. It really is just a worm drive going straight to the wheel set, which just sits into the plastic chassis. The Mahano controller, though, we know is quite a good one, so hopefully it will do a good job of running the Loco, which weighs in at just 98 grams, so it's very, very light indeed. The other thing to mention is that the track goes together okay. I mean, if it does keep coming apart, you can use those track clips to keep it together. Really, though, it's not recommended. I mean, you're going to want to get rid of this track as soon as possible if you are starting out with this, although, like I say, I wouldn't really recommend starting out with this. The other thing is that the sort of cardboard track mat doesn't sit down very well. I've stood on it and tried to make it go flat, but as you can see, the track doesn't sit properly, so you would want to iron it or something if you've got time, which I hadn't. But yeah, I mean, that's not ideal either. The Hornby track mats are sort of a plastic and they do flatten down without any ironing required, which I think is better. Either way, we'll try it on the Mahano controller, have a little run with it on the actual track it was designed for, then I'll try it on my Gauge Master so that we can see how it compares in relation to other locos I have. Right, turning up then, let's give this a go. Will it work? Oh, hey, it works. I mean, that was not a given. That was not a given. Um, there we are couldn't get it to change direction. Is it going to be a good crawler? Well, I don't know. Uh, the Mahano controller doesn't offer as good a crawl as the Gage Master does, but 
looking at that, that was not bad. And it's not been run in yet. All right, let's go for about 50% speed. Oh dear, those tunnel mouths are quite close, aren't they, to that chimney? Blimey. Look at that. The fact is then, I mean, the quality leaves a lot to be desired, but the fact is that it works at the end of the day and also rather well. I mean, the loco performed pretty well. Uh, it's only going to get better with running in, one hopes. We'll see about that. The buildings, they don't look very convincing. They're not model buildings. They're very much toys and accessories for a train set. And they are what they are, which is fine. Uh, they are a lot of fun. I mean, I'm not sure that I am the intended <laughs> target audience for them. Uh, so I didn't really enjoy messing around with them too much. But I think if your child does, or if you do, then they would be absolutely fine. So not a complaint there. The couplings on the wagons, they looked all bent up and messed up to me. I haven't really done anything to them at all. And they did couple fine and they seem to be working fine. Whether that's true on my main layout, I'm not sure. We'll have to give that a try at some point. <laughs> oh, I have a very bad feeling about that, but we'll try it. Yeah, we'll see if they handle points, that kind of thing. But for now, I think we'll let the loco run in. I'll leave it running on this layout here. Then after it's done that, we'll get it onto my main layout, give it a try, and then I'll get some ratings done for you. All right, not bad. Okay, <laughs> running in has done. I've done most of it on the main layout with my Gauge Master controller. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's not derailed or anything like that, but I have been trying the crawl. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's see. It looks as though it's going to crawl. And I suppose that's not bad, actually. In fact, that's the best I've seen it do. Hmm. Backwards. Ooh more difficult to get it to crawl backwards. I mean, that's not bad. It's not what you call a great crawler. And if this was like a 200 pound model, I would definitely berate it. Um, I've got to kind of treat all models the same though, haven't I? Ooh, backwards, it's really struggling. Any slower, it does stall. No lights, I should say. Uh, the box suggested with that sort of graphic over the lights that the lights would work. Nope, I don't think they do. Maybe on some versions of the model, they would. <laughs> Dies on the express points, obviously, because of the wheelbase. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best performer in the world. It is reliable, though, so fit for purpose, I suppose, would get a tick. The wagons are not very good. I chose what I considered to be one of the best and tried it on the Gordons Hill rolling test. It just faltered. I could not get it to go. I even gave it a big push, and it just stopped dead. The wagons are not very freewheeling. Anyway, let's get the wagons coupled, then. Okay, are we actually coupled? No. <laughs> Right, try one more. Gently, no. Yeah, I mean, it's not very good, let's be honest. I think the other Mahano sets had something going for them because they were really fit for purpose. And the quality was always okay, adequate. This one was cheap enough and you do get an awful lot for your money, but I just think the quality ruins it, unfortunately. It's just a bit too, they, they just needed to turn down the cheap and nasty dial just a bit because as it is, it's, they just went too far with it. Oh, no. I tried to get it to crawl, but it's died again. Oh, well, at least I get to do the comedy floor slap. There we go. <laughs> so it works and the Loco can haul the wagons it comes with, but I don't really think I can recommend this. If you want a cheap train set, I think there are better options, even from Mahano. Uh, check out the cargo train. If you want a project, maybe I could just about recommend it, but I really do mean project. It is not gonna be just repaint. You're gonna to have to refit the mechanism. You wanna change all the wheels on the wagons and the couplings too. It's a lot of work and for over 60 quid, it's just, again, if you want a project, I think there are better options as well. But you know, I wouldn't say do not buy this. There are some merits. You do get a lot, like I say, for your money, but I don't think I could recommend something that is as poor quality as this which is a shame because I love Mahano and I love some of their products, um, but I do think, like I say, yeah, the cheap and nasty dial has just been turned up too far on this. And with a bit better quality, it could have been a great value set. It could have been a good buy. Uh, four wagons, a loco, all of that scenery, the big poo, could have been great. It really, really could, but mm, no, the quality lets it down. Maybe whoever made these had a bad day when they made mine. <laughs> Maybe some of them are better. If you've got one of these and yours is better, do let me know. But no, not something I can recommend, I don't think. It is, at the very least, though, a very, very fun set. There's an awful lot to do with it. It's just, you know, if you're going to buy this for a young one or something like that, 
would you risk it with the quality being so hit and miss as it is? It's too much to risk, isn't it? And it could end in disappointment. And at the end of the day, £60 is a lot if you're going to be left with disappointment. But from any sort of distance, I mean, 60 quid just for the train itself, if you forget all of this cardboard stuff, it's certainly not terrible. But as soon as you start looking up close, yeah, uh, you're not going to be fooling anybody, like I say, without an immense amount of work. So here are my ratings then for the Mahano Western train set. Yeah, I don't know what to think. Obviously, my standard rating system here doesn't really play to the train set strength. It says nothing of the play value, which obviously is pretty high. And maybe it's a little bit unfair having, uh, you know, categories such as detail in this because the detail is not that important. But I'm going to use my standard rating system anyway, because otherwise it won't stack up against my other models very well. The level of detail I have just given one star. I mean, some of the detail was okay, but what detail was there was ruined by the poor quality. We've got poor quality paintwork, bad moulding. Yeah, the, the detail was not good. And on some of the wagons, some of the details would be missed off as well, because this was such a cheap set. Performance, I mean, the performance isn't as bad as I was expecting it to be, having seen the quality, but it's still not the best, even on my super expensive Gauge Master controller. It wasn't able to crawl any better, really, than on the Mahano controller. The crawl wasn't very good. The Loco, I suppose, does stay on the track all right. It's a bit noisy, but it, it works as it should besides that. But yeah, if you compare it to the performance of proper models, it doesn't stand up very well. Let's put it politely there. But yeah, I mean, it's okay. It does work. That's the main thing. The pulling power, yeah, not very powerful. Uh, only about 10 coaches. In fact, I only have two weaker Locos on record than this, and that is the Hornby Ruston, which is about a quarter of the size, and also the Hornby Pug, which again is uh, a pretty tiny Loco in comparison. Not very powerful. The mechanism then isn't very good. I mean, it does have all-wheel pickups, but you'd expect so. Three-pole motor, no proper bearings. No flywheel, nothing like that. It is very, 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 very basic. Uh, it's, it's fit for purpose, I suppose, but basic, must be said. The quality then, I was going to give one star, but then I thought, no, some of the items in here were good quality. I mean, the power supply, the controller is pretty good. A couple of the wagons were okay. I like those that have the NEM couplings, but overall the quality is a bit of a shambles with this. I mean, the construction is mainly plastic in the loco and the wagons, and that goes for the wheels as well. You've got poor decoration, the paint's all smudged, even on toys, you don't want that. The loco and some of the wagons were absolutely filthy. You've got steel track. A lot of the wagons were quite poor quality as well, with the couplings dropping off. Overall, I think the quality, I'm being generous really, giving it two stars, but <laughs> let me know in the comments what you think, you may disagree. Value for money though, I think is okay. I paid £61.57, I've just checked Amazon though, and they're being sold for £77 now. Not sure I can recommend that. The price is quite good, but I do think it's difficult to get excited about the value for money here, as I did with the cargo train and even the TGV to an extent. I think £61 would only be impressive if the product was really good quality, and sadly it's not. Value's alright though, I think the value is the saving grace of this train set. Overall though, that is a pretty pants score of 4.33 out of 10. As always, that does not represent the play value, which I would give 5 star very easily, but unfortunately play value is not really one of my categories. So into the logbook, it is very sadly bottom below the Helgen 1361, the only thing that actually is worse. Yeah, it's okay, it works properly, but the quality is very, very poor. At least with the cargo train and the TGV, we had quite an impressive little mechanism inside. Big locos, all-wheel drive, metal chassis in some case. Not got anything like that with this one, uh, which is a shame. Anyway, folks, those are just my opinions anyway. You might not agree. And if you don't, please make that known down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And also, if you do want to try one of these, like I say, there are affiliate links down in the description. For the price, they're not a terrible buy, but uh, I think you could do better. But that's just my thought. Thank you very much for watching then. I hope you enjoyed it. It was quite entertaining at the very least. Well, I hope you thought so anyway. And I'll see you on the next one. All right, cheers, folks. Have a great week.